backed up at their own two. Taylor climbs through the hole and gets to the seven yard line. Gain of five. That's tough rushing yards there, running to the right. This is where, if you're the Redskin defense, defense, you have to be careful because you've got a lot of field to defend. And Sean Taylor has been flying up and flying up and flying up. Greg Williams, their defensive coordinator, can't let his safety get too aggressive or else he's going to wind up having to run and chase somebody down the field. Johnson pumping through the deep ball. Incomplete. Taylor was headhunting Robinson. Marcus Washington again the pressure. And a flag comes down back where Taylor was. They're going to call Sean Taylor for a late hit. It's getting to a point where you just about can't touch anybody. After the ball, looks like it leaves their body. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 21. Lowering his head to the chest of a defenseless receiver. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First Trying to protect the defenseless receiver. Watch his head, the crown of his helmet. But it hits him in the shoulder. I mean, the, watch this. Marcus Robinson actually could have possibly made a play back on the ball because the ball stayed in the field of play. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying that when the ball is still in the field of play, there's a possibility that a receiver could tip it and make a play on it. Do you think that Sean Taylor's reputation as a tough guy who makes plays like that works against him in that circumstance because they look for him at all? No. No. Remember, it was Mike Carey's crew that worked the wild card game against Tampa Bay last year when Taylor was ejected for spitting against the Buccaneers the run for a couple of yards with Chester Taylor Marcus Washington very active made the tackle I think your reputation does work against you I think referees look at games and they look at players and in a case like that I think it's reasonable to at least suggest that his reputation worked against him it's reasonable to consider it thank you Second and eight, Travis Taylor, the receiver, has not been heard from tonight for the Vikings. He was in motion, now he's blocking. And Chester Taylor can't get back to the line. Demetric Evans again. Demetric Evans has had a terrific night. He's a backup defensive tackle and end, playing behind Andre Carter on that right side. But he has knocked down passes, he's run people down, screens, slides inside both blocks. Brian McKinney couldn't block him. And he makes another terrific play. Third year Redskin, two years with the Cowboys, out of football in 03. Big factor tonight. Third down coming up. The house gets loud again. The third down has not been kind to the Redskins defensively. Johnson down the middle. Travis Taylor hung on to the 49 yard line. First down. Mike, you wonder where he was? He was hiding inside. Right down the slot, the Redskins again on third down cannot convert. Right part of your screen goes right into the slot. The quickness with which Brad Johnson gets the ball out and the accuracy. Great throw. What are his numbers on third down tonight? How many is he converted? Look at that. Kenny Wright no. almost gets a hand on it. First catch of the night for Travis Taylor. It picked up 24. Drive started way on back at the two, now near midfield. Chester Taylor, and now they run left side, and those ones and twos are becoming sevens and eights. Archuleta the tackle. You look at the left side of this Minnesota line, Bryant McKinney, Steve Hutchinson. That's where they've run an awful lot. Chester Taylor slides up. The hole that they create with their bodies is incredible. Make Archuleta come up and make the play. Get down around the goal line. McKinney will shield the inside. Hutchinson starts that way, then bounces off. Touchdown, Chester Taylor. That's why you run left there every time. Second and two, heading that way with Taylor. That time, Archuleta read it 
and made the play. A penalty marker comes in. Did he get him up at the face mask area? Incidental face mask, defense number 22, five yard penalty, results in first down. I don't think it was Carlos Rogers. I think it was Adam Archuleta, number 40. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mike Carey just corrected it on the PA to the fans. And that play stopped there. Joe showed us good running. Uh, successful running the ball. Tony has gotten Minnesota out here now. Well, Brad Childress told us the other day, you better be able to bloody someone's nose and you better be able to run out the clock. I'd like to believe we'll be able to do that. This is the circumstance in which they're trying to do that. And I think I think they have the Redskins back on their heels on defense. The Redskins defense has been the best part of this club for two or three years. And the Vikings have had great success against it tonight. At home for the Redskins. In the 44 play action, receivers run deep on the right. Try to come back to Troy Williamson, who had it in his hands. A tougher catch, but that's three he could have had tonight. Three I, drops. I wouldn't call that a drop. His feet went out from underneath him when he went down to try and make a play on him. Mm -hmm. Brad Johnson gets the ball out so quick. That, that's not easy. I mean, that one, he's diving for it, trying to make a play on it. Could have had Tough foot. Hit him in the head. There's another Didn't third it, down. Did not hit him in the head? Yeah, but I mean, it was he was losing his balance, too. All right. Not like the other one that hit him in the head when he was running down the field. Johnson throwing for Klein Saucer, the tight end, who was well covered by Lamar Marshall, the middle linebacker. So even with the Redskin penalties that extended this drive, the Vikings will have to punch. But the Vikings accomplished what they wanted to. They got the ball away from their own goal line, moved it out into position where now they can possibly pin the Redskins back deep or at least make them go a long way. And this is where the uh, punter, Chris Cluey, who worked on his directional kicking so much after coming back from a torn ACL, will try to keep it away from Randall L. Down it inside the 10, just like Derek Frost did for the Redskins last time around. Ronyel Whitaker, the gunner, was back behind the goal line. No chance to locate the ball. Washington will take over at its own 20. The Champions Tour presents the 2006 3M Championship. For the sixth consecutive year, the TPC Twin Cities hosted the event. Entering the final round, rookie David Edwards trailed the leader by three strokes. And after bogeys on the opening two holes, he fell five shots behind. But Edwards found his game and made six birdies in the final 11 holes to win his first title since his win on the PGA Tour in 1993, a victory drought spanning 13 years. Edwards won in only his 11th start on the Champions Tour and moved into the top 10 in the season-long Charles Schwab Cup race. His career largest paycheck also moved him into the top 10 on this year's Champions Tour money list. Congratulations, David Edwards, winner of the 2006 3M Championship. I used to be a chiropractor. I had to give it up because of a problem with my hands. I started playing poker pretty seriously. My wife said, why not give it a go at the World Series? Sometimes I still can't believe I'm the reigning world champion of poker. My name is Joe Hashem. Who's next? The hard-hitting action of the NFL continues on ESPN. The San Diego Chargers begin their march to the top when they face the silver and black attack of the Oakland Raiders. Next, the NFL on ESPN. Brad Childress, first game as a head coach. Joe Gibbs has been at this for a decade plus. And Joe, what are you thinking on the sideline? Well, Mike, you have to think now, if you're Brad Childress and Joe Gibbs, at most I'll get two possessions. 
So it's vital for the Redskins to be able to get some first downs and change field position. Hope their defense can stop, maybe win it with a field goal. Vikings are thinking, if we can hold them deep here, we can do the same thing on the other end. Brunel's quick hit. First down to the 32 for Antoine Randall, who's been a factor tonight. Antoine Winfield tripping him up. If you're just joining us as we come across the halfway mark of the fourth quarter, a missed extra point off the Vikings' first touchdown is the reason our game is tied right now. Now where you're looking for is the $2 million offensive coordinator to come up with all those plays which is the reason you brought him here to begin with. But then you have to get those million-dollar players to execute. <laughs> <laughs> the two is nothing compared to the player. Chris Cooley in motion. Liddell bets on the toss to the 34-yard line. We've seen uh, some of Clinton Portis, especially in the third quarter. It's bets here right now. The difference in this offense the Redskins have from a year ago is 62% of the runs last year were run in between the tackles. I would venture to say of the runs that the Redskins have had tonight, probably three maybe have been between the tackles. Everything else has been at the perimeter. That's going to be a distinctive difference in the style of offense that they have in 06 that they had in 05. Randall L, the motion man, clears out the area for Mike Sellers who's uh, bumped out of bounds by Fred Smoot and E.J. Henderson. Sellers had never carried the ball in his NFL career now in its seventh year, but 38 receptions, including 13 touchdowns. He's never carried yeah. it once in seven years? Mm -hmm. Of his NFL career. Carried a couple times in preseason. 12 receptions last year, seven touchdowns, Mike. That's yes. a pretty good percentage for a guy hardly touching the football. Third and six. Bunch at the bottom of the screen. And off that bunch, the block pass knocked down by Ray Edwards, the rookie out of Purdue. So the fourth round pick for the Vikings comes up with a big play as they were trying to dump it over his outstretched arm to Betts. If he's got crazy glue on his hand, that's a game ender because he's taking that all the way in. What a play, though. At 6'5", able to get up there at about 8 feet to knock that got down. The, got the big yeah. mitts on it. See, you don't need 7-footers to do that, Tony. We talked about that earlier. How he's 6'5". Right? But, but he can jump like a 7-footer. So three and out as these teams exchange punts. More fair catching it at the 28-yard line. We have a penalty marker down. Going to be an ineligible... Now, if you're the Vikings, I think you have them re-kick it. You don't want to tack it on? Oh, yeah, you can tack it on. That I'd, option in the rules? I'd changed. almost rather have them re-kick it. Give me another shot. And he's asking Brad uh, Childress now. He'll oh. probably tack it on. An eligible receiver downfield on the kick by the kicking team. It's a five-yard penalty. Minnesota's elected to take it on the return. Five yards, first down, timeout. Best explanations of any official in the league, Mike Carey. <laughs> Five and a half to go. San Diego and Oakland warming up. This one heating up. All tied at 16. years 7300 yards 72 touchdowns Ladanian Tomlinson as good as you get as a back in this league he and the Chargers open the season in Oakland game two of our Monday Night Football doubleheader coming up next here on ESPN unlike Sellers they give him the ball and say run with it a couple Smart of times. moves Vikings taking over at the 33 yard line and Taylor takes it to the 37. 
Recapping what's happened on this uh, September 11th, very patriotic and emotional scenes here at FedEx Field in Washington. Brad Johnson throwing a touchdown here in the second half. He's completed half of his passes. Clinton Portis has touched it a dozen times. Ten runs, two receptions, 50 yards. Scored a touchdown in the second. This missed extra point on the first touchdown. The snap was fine. Chris Cluey, the punter, did a poor job on the hold. That's why we're tied. Hitting the five-minute mark, and Taylor hits it again. First down to the 47-yard line. Tony Richardson, the free agent fullback with a big block. What Brad Childress, both the offensive coordinator and the head coach, is trying to do is he's trying to force Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins, to bring more people up around the line of scrimmage so he can take a shot. He's just letting his offensive line pound away. He can almost make a case, Mike. Brian McKinney, Steve Hutchinson, Matt Burke on that left side could be one of the best in football. And they asked, could this guy be a number one back? 25 carries tonight ties his career high in the game. Play action. Johnson comes down to Wiggins. In just a yard or so. Chester Taylor has run the football. Where has he run it all night? 25 times, 76 hard yards. Got the one touchdown up the middle. But look at that. 20 times to the left and up the middle and only five to the right side. It tells you where the Minnesota Vikings are going to hang their hat running the football. It also, it also tells you the commitment that they're going to make to running the football, taking the early gains of one and two yards, hoping that by the fourth quarter they wear out the defense. Sean Taylor struggling with his hand that he banged up on that last play. Second and ten and no go what a game Marcus Washington's having Michelle Tafoya Mike Tony Richardson told me what he thought of Chester Taylor and, he, and I'll quote people might think I'm crazy but Chester reminds me of Priest Holmes they might look small from far away but up close they're both put together well they have great vision Taylor's a tough guy and does a good job following blocks time will tell Remember, Tony Richardson is a Pro Bowl fullback who has blocked for Free Holmes and Larry Johnson. He knows his running backs, Mike. He certainly does. And Mike, third down for the Redskins has been absolutely miserable. Their defense cannot get off the field. Pressure coming. Picked up. Johnson's throw is complete. Fighting for the first down is Williamson, who dropped three key balls tonight. Got out of the tackle of Carlos Rogers. Penalty marker down. And we'll attack on to this. Childress wants the 15-yard face mask. Personal foul. It is. Major face mask. Defense. Number 21. From the end of the run, 15 yards. Automatic. First down. Total gain 28 yards. Troy Williamson just gave had a ton of room with Carlos Rogers then Sean Taylor comes in and grabs him around the helmet another Sean Taylor penalty another 15 yarder which has kept the Minnesota drive alive now the Minnesota Vikings will run the football to force the Redskins to use their timeouts you're in field goal range here for Longwell you've got that high paid left side of the line Taylor cuts it back Keeps his feet going and gets close to another first down as we close in on the two-minute warning. Redskins might think about taking a timeout here. And they will. Washington's going to stop the clock to try to retain some time. Steve Hutchinson is just a beast. He takes Cornelius Griffin and just runs him out of town. I know you don't want to go back into that notion of Sean Taylor and getting penalties on reputation, but two big second-half penalties against Sean Taylor. Now, reputation, though, is not grabbing a face mask. I mean, right. that you, know, right. you grab a face mask, that's just a bad decision. I mean, he, he is a big hitter. He likes to play that way. He's going to play that way. Problem is, you can't tackle people up around the head. I mean, we're, we're starting to get a sense. What we've seen, I think, in this first week of football is that the league is making a conscientious effort to protect guys who are exposed and protect quarterbacks. But if you're the Redskins and you end up losing this game when it happens late in the fourth quarter, you will look at those two penalties Huge. and you'll have a chat with Mr. Taylor, won't Huge. you? Absolutely. Yes. 
And a measurement here on the Chester Taylor run. It's going to come up short. So it'll be second and short, 226 left. And, and Joe Gibbs is doing what you need to do here, try to preserve time for yourself and get the ball back with a chance to tie the game or win it if Minnesota kicks a field goal. In essence, with the two-minute warning, you have three timeouts. So they'll run it here. Let's say they pick up a first down, you stop the clock. Run it again, stop the clock. Run it again, stop the clock. Now, you're at the mercy of that clock with 40 seconds running down. Not a whole lot of time to give yourself an opportunity, if you have to, to either kick a field goal or, or get a touchdown, depending on what Minnesota does. When you talk about building a foundation of a team, and Steve Hutchinson, the guard is the most anonymous position in football. But what everybody tells him, he's got nastiness about him, and they're playing as a line with a little bit of that physical nastiness here in the second half. Second and one, Chester Taylor gets the first down to the 11-yard line, and that will force more time to come off the clock in field goal range. He's going to go back to the statement by Brad Childress the other day. You better be able to bloody someone's nose, and you better be able to run out the clock. I'd like to believe we'll be able to do that. They're doing that right Looks now. Looks like they are. Going to take it down to the two-minute warning in field goal range, but remember they missed an extra point earlier. All tied at 16 with the Chargers and Raiders on deck. ESPN Game Plan has up to 150 extra college football games. Key matchups and rivalries from major conferences. All available when you order your exclusive ESPN Game Plan pay-per-view package. It's maximum college football. Get full access to live college football games online with ESPN's Game Plan. To order Game Plan, go to ESPN.com and search Game Plan. What do you want, chicken nuggets? Pizza. You want this? That's sick. Viking fans will be hanging around. You'll all be hanging around. Randy Moss puts on a show on Monday night. We'll see Moss and the Raiders with Aaron Brooks' new quarterback against San Diego. Game two of our Monday Night Football season opening doubleheader coming up next here on ESPN. It's a great look for Randy Moss. That's a great do, <laughs> isn't it? Come on. That's great. And Phillip Rivers gets a chance to start. The guy they ran out of town, Drew Brees, got a victory down in New Orleans. Congratulations to Sean Payton. Now Brad Johnson trying to do it for his coach. Two minutes left. Skins a couple of timeouts. First and ten. Taylor left side into the waiting arms of Archuleta. At the 11, Washington will stop it here with a minute 52 to go. The Redskins can stop it one more time, giving Minnesota a good opportunity to run significant chunks off the clock if they don't get a first down or a touchdown and run it down to where they can take a field goal and not leave Washington timeouts or time on the clock. Where the inept nature of this football team has been, the Minnesota Vikings have had 173 yards this half. The Washington Redskins, 73. If I'm Brad Childress, I'm willing to run play action pass and try and score a touchdown. You would do that. I was just going to ask yep. you that. Would you only hand the ball off here no. and play for the field goal? No. 
No, because you, the field goal is almost in the bank right now. It's close enough. It's not a lot of pressure. You would run the risk of making the kind of mistake where something could be run back for a touchdown. I don't believe you. I don't believe Brad Johnson would make that kind of mistake for me. I believe in him enough to protect the football. You can note the clock way down here, guys, inside of 30 seconds if you keep running it. Washington just one timeout left. Here's Taylor. He does the smart thing, stays inside, tackled inbounds. Timeout taken now with a minute 49 to go. So you're out of timeout. You're going to run a play, run it down for as much as you can. And there's Ziggy Wolf, the owner and chairman of the Minnesota Vikings. And Tony, when he got his hands on the new baby that he bought, <laughs> all the baby did was cry and dirty the diapers. Absolutely. Within 20 seconds of buying the house, the house collapsed, if we can go away from the baby analogy. <laughs> now he's got to feel, now he's got to feel great. I mean, the, the possibility of going on the road beating a playoff team in the opening game for his new coach, his new staff, and making the decision that he and Brad Childress did to get rid of Dante Culpepper and take the oldest quarterback in the league who's played and distinguished himself tonight. Everything would look to be good for Ziggy Wolf right now. For the Redskins, you've got to figure you're going to get the ball back, possibly down by three points with about a minute to go and no timeouts which is going to be critical for who's going to be back returning the kick. What kind of field position are you going to get? All those things have to be thought about by the owner, Daniel Snyder, on the right side. And Tom Cruise, I glanced over and looked at him. He said, this has been unbelievable. And he's right. Maybe, maybe Tom it. Cruise will tell him, give him a play to send it. Hey, remember he was in that movie, All the Right Moves. But put Jamie Foxx in the back there. Jamie can play. Brunel waiting, hoping he'll get the ball back with some time. You would figure Washington out of timeouts. You run it here, max the clock, and then go for your field goal attempt. Of course, they'd love to get the first down. Taylor just does the right thing. It'll be off the left hash in about a 30-yard field goal attempt. As the uh, play clock runs down, it will be at 104 when the play clock gets to the end. And we'll see if Minnesota takes a timeout at that point and then goes for the field goal. They're going to have the ball with about a minute to go. No timeouts. And it's a, it's a situation that you practice. You work on it. You work the sidelines. What you can do is you can have a receiver catch the ball in the middle of the field and actually go down. He can and they'll stop it right there? They'll stop it there. All of this is presuming Minnesota makes the field goal. We go back to the very start of the game when Chris Cluey, the second-year man on this Vikings team, is the punter, who really worked hard at holding to become the holder this year. And he held for one year at UCLA for a lefty kicker, so he got a little bit of a sense of doing that. But now holding for Ryan Longwell. So he's had to adjust to all of that, and now he has to make sure he holds on to the snap, which he didn't after the opening touchdown. As you see, when it has mattered to tie the game, go up, lead changing field goals, Last two minutes, Longwell, in his Packer days, was money. So it would be a cheap shot to say, Chris, I don't have a clue. And so I won't say that on the air. That would not be good. I won't say it. Even though you did, it wouldn't be good. He's the holder. Leffler the snapper. Officially a 31-yard field goal for the big free agency acquisition, Longwell. Vikings lead. 60 seconds remaining. No timeouts, Washington. So now it is on Minnesota's defense and the Redskins offense. And Susie, that means Mark Brunel. And Mike, it's been a massive effort for Brunel to learn this new offense. In his 14th season, almost 36 years old, he said it's been so tough. He dedicated his entire offseason to it at the expense of seeing his wife and kids. He went so far as to say he almost couldn't wait till tonight was over because there were so many question marks. Now he has to execute it in under two minutes, and soon enough, we'll all know how it turns out. Yeah, lots of watching film of Trent Green when he ran this offense, memorizing the new offense. Here's your first test for not just Brunel. That's exactly right. Al Saunders brought in with a 700-page playbook, and Joe Gibbs seeds the right to call the plays to him. Maybe Gibbs is thinking to himself, I might like to get back in the action here. You pay the guy over $2 million to come in as a coordinator. He has undoubtedly a great track record. This is pressure on him and on the offense to execute all this new stuff. I think mean, it's pressure on John Hall, their kicker, who doesn't have the strongest leg. He was 0 for 1 last year, over 50. 
Betts and Thrash for the kickoff return. Liddell Betts takes this one from the 10. He hit it hard out to the 38-yard line. So there's a big help to start this drive. This is where you really have to manage the time as a quarterback. You've got to get people lined up. The most important thing is when you set your formations, don't put your receivers where they have to cross the field. If you line up with Santana Moss on the right, he stays on the right. Antoine Randall on the left, he stays on the left. Any way you can economize time. Redskins have no timeouts. And if you're thinking, give him a 47-yard field goal attempt. That would mean Washington gaining 32 yards. Antoine Randall in motion. Brunel throwing the sideline for Moss. A catch. Pushed out of bounds. Didn't get the feet down, but because he was pushed out, it's a good catch. Now there's a case where you pick on the rookie safety. Mark Brunel pumps to the middle of the field. And Greg Blue can't get over to knock the ball out of Santana Moss's hands. Plus, he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Blue in for Dwight Smith, and, and because he was pushed out of bounds, not reviewable, but one foot down counts. It's a first down for the Redskins with 47 seconds to go. Randall L., nice, tough catch to make at the 34-yard line. Look at how aware this offense is what's going on. They're down to 30 seconds. They know it. Marked at the 35. We know we'll keep it. A pump thought about deep. Now scrambling gets out of the tackle box. Too tall for Brandon Lloyd. The Redskins wanted a flag for the defenseless receiver. How come we don't get one of those? Well, also, he hits him in the back of the head with a forearm as well. I mean, we've seen some calls by defensive backs making plays on receivers tonight. That was one. It is third down, 22 seconds, no timeouts. From here, a field goal attempt is 52 to 53 yards. How about your range check? In the pregame, the long for Hall was 52. You can work the middle of the football field because you'll have enough time if you get the first down to spike it. Brunel's throw is caught by Randall L. Out of bounds. He is shy of the first down, so it is fourth down. But a field goal from here is 47 yards, a little bit closer. 17 seconds left. I think that uh, John Hall has not kicked from over 40 yards this whole year. I, I believe he was 0 for 4 in the preseason and only hit from 32 and 38. Last year, he was 5 for 6 from this distance. His pressure kick record. Certainly Mark Grinnell did his job to give him a chance. Sure. So did Betts with the kick return. Here's Hall from 48 to tie the game. Drifting, no good. Missed it left. Good pressure by the Vikings coming in. And Minnesota's going to get out of here in all likelihood with one. Fred Smoot came diving in from the end. Joe Gibbs doesn't like to look at him. Now he really won't like to look at that one. Brad Childress, he's willing to watch. And he will now join Jimmy Johnson as the only head coaches to beat Joe Gibbs for their first NFL head coaching win. Obviously, Gibbs wasn't a Hall of Famer when that happened with Johnson, but he is here as Hall's field goal is missed. Brad Johnson comes back to Washington, takes a knee, and will take Minnesota back on the charter at 1-0. and And he joins nine other coaches in the league that have won away this weekend. Beating a playoff team on the road for your first game. Baltimore did it, Atlanta did it. Somebody else did it that I'm blanking on now. <laughs> Indianapolis beat a playoff team on the road and now Minnesota has done it on the road. Some words there with Daniels and McKinney at the end of the game. John Jansen and Brad Johnson, former Washington teammates, exchanging greetings. And there they are. Two of the veteran manage the game quarterbacks who did the job tonight. Those guys live in very similar shoes and very successful shoes here tonight. Here's Michelle with Brad Johnson. 
Brad, the Redskins with that opportunity to tie it with the field goal. What's going through your mind as that kick was attempted? Uh, Mark did a great job of just putting them in field goal position. They did a great job with no timeouts, and uh, Mahar's kind of stopping over there. But really, you know, I was tying my shoes getting ready for an overtime game, but uh, fortunately, it was uh, a little wide left for us and uh, turned out great. Prior to that, on your final scoring drive, the field goal drive, you had a, just the ability to hand off to Chester Taylor again and again and again. What did that feel like to be able to rely on your running back? Well, we needed that. We took a lot of hits during uh, preseason, but we, we, we stayed with our running game all night long. He put us in field goal position, took care of the ball, secured it, and uh, closed the game out. It was, it was a great film to win here, especially in uh, Washington Stadium. Congratulations, Brad. Thanks, Joe. And Johnson and the Vikings, Michelle, become the 10th team to win on the road in this opening weekend. It's the most since 1983. And San Diego will try to make it 11 right now out in Oakland. Great start to our Monday Night Football run. Chargers and Raiders are next. We see you next week in Jacksonville with the Super Bowl champion Steelers. Susie Kalber, Michelle Tafoya with Joe Thiesman, and Tony Kornheiser in the booth. Thanks to our producer Jay Rothman, director Chip Dean, our entire crew, Mike Tirico, saying thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Off we go to Oakland, and here's Brad Nessler. New on Orbit, Al Jazeera Sports Channel, Plus One and Plus Two, the most popular sports channels in the region, which provide a wide coverage of the best international and regional sports, including Italian Serie A, Spanish League, and much more.